here today, obviously, to talk about Zoe's extraordinary playlist, which is such a great show. Um, and for those who are unaware, it, Zoe had an MRI. She had all this music downloaded in her head, and now she can hear people's thoughts, but they come out as musical numbers. And you play Simon, who recently was promoted to the head of PR for the tech company that uh, they all work at together. Yeah, yeah you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, just give me an idea of how season two has been different for you so far than season one, and then we'll we'll get into last week's episode because we really want to talk about that. Absolutely. Um, I feel like, um, well, okay. So last season, Simon's main trajectory and his main his main relationship to Zoe was through grief, and he was moving mm -hmm. through that in his relationship the end of a relationship and the forging of this grief bond with Zoe. Um, actually, Simon was the first melancholic uh, heart song that she heard. So mm -hmm. it was, it was, and for me personally, as the actor, uh, the reason I signed on to do Zoe is because it was a black man moving through grief. I lost my dad similarly, like mm -hmm. when I was 19 years ago. So wow. that's the reason that I wanted to do it. It was just so, it was like kismet. And, um, uh, and th this is different because it's it's personal. Mm. It's not grief necessarily. It is a trauma, though. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's this there are these. It's it's very similar in that it's it's grief. Um, it's different in the kind of trauma it is, and it's also different because it's in the workplace, right? And mm -hmm. um, and another difference that I'm finding in this in this season is that we get into the tension between Zoe and Simon. Mm. Like there's, for, for one of the first times, uh, there's a disconnect between them and mm -hmm. everything in their relationship so far has been like hyper connection. And so for this, it to be about race, for it to be um, about Simon's experience in the world as a black man, and for he and Zoe to have this conversation so vulnerably uh, mm. is, is pretty special to me. Yeah, I was saying earlier, it was so well done um, that I, you know, I don't think of myself as being racist or, or biased against anybody, but I, it made me think of maybe a time mm. when I thought something unconsciously or maybe just made a joke quickly and not even realizing how it's perceived on the other end. Was that mm. something that I know you were part of the creative process for this episode? So was that something that you really wanted to bring across or does it come organically? It was something that we wanted to bring across. I mean, I heard about this episode back in late June, July, mm -hmm. and I felt and at that time, it was like three to four weeks after George Floyd had been killed. Mm -hmm. And um, I was moving through a lot as well as everybody else in the nation and the world. And so I got this information from Austin that he wanted to go the systemic racism route. And I had a lot of pause. I was mm. like, um, I felt an immediate sense of responsibility. I just wanted to do it the right way. Yeah. Um, I believe in the power of stories, you know, and they, they have, they can, they can heal and they can wound. And so uh, it was a very strategic and personal thing on everyone's part to make sure that Zoe um, and Simon and Mo and Tobin and even Danny Michael Davis, that mm. all the characters were flushed out, that they weren't archetypes or caricatures. Um, because another, one, another thing that always resonates with me is like specificity is the thing that breeds the universality, right? Mm. If you don't have the specificity, then what you have are a bunch of tropes and a bunch of um, convenient things that happen to, mm. to, to talk about a specific thing. And people, an audience, I mean, we have a very, I mean, our audience, to be an audience of our show, you have to be, um, you have to begin to explore. You have to be a smart audience member. Yes. We go there, you know? Yeah. So the audience is very smart and we, we don't pull any punches. And it was intentional that for Zoe, each step of the way, uh, well, one, that Zoe be flawed, that she make mm -hmm. mistakes. Um, it was very important. Uh, for Zora specifically and myself, that that Zoe go through this process of growing. Mm -hmm. She go through this process of like, 
learning something, of trying and failing, and then applying the new thing in spaces where there are no black people present. Mm. So this conversation she has with Danny Michael Davis is so paramount because in that space, she's she's wielding everything that she's learned up to that moment. And without that, you have, without that, you don't have a, you don't have an episode in my opinion. I love the part where she tried to almost understand what Simon was dealing with by saying, you know, I'm a woman in tech and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I'm a black man in the world. You know, I, I it was really very eye opening that, you know, you, you don't walk in anybody else's shoes. And even if you think you can relate, you can't. Um, mm. How difficult was that scene for both you and Jane to shoot? It was incredibly difficult. I mean, fortunately, I have my same scene partner is, a, is my friend and I trust her, you know, and um, we had many conversations about the scene. Zora and I talked about that scene is actually drawn from these, you know, two and a half hour conversations Zora and I had when I was in my first quarantine here. And mm. this idea of the amputation of self, this idea of um, the parts of, of, of being whitewashed by the lens of another. Um, those were personal experiences that he and I shared with one another. As a matter of fact, this idea of the amputating of oneself is something that this language is something I've been wrestling with for the past like three years. And we mm -hmm. talked about it and it wove itself into the episode. And I'm really grateful for that. That also meant that it was very charged and very personal mm -hmm. and um, triggering to go there. And so sure. even in the in uh, uh, rehearsal, we did our rehearsal. Um, I went back to the green room and I just felt so raw. Mm. I just, I, I, you know, I broke down a little bit mm. and Jane was there and, and she looked at me and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. And I just had to remind myself, you know, I, I choose to do this, I'm a storyteller, this is my instrument, this is my choice. Um, and it's it's my joy and my responsibility mm -hmm. to tell that truth. Like the, the point is to go to the nerve. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Um, and even speaking of that specific scene, we we cracked the code on that on the day. So really? Zora Bick and Gaga, yeah, Zora, our writer for the episode, was in the space. He he pinned you know, this brilliant scene. And he came to me before we shot it. And he was like, I think we have to earn Simon going to this place that he goes to at the end. We have to earn him feeling the need to tell his friend this. And we experimented with a few different things on the day. Wow. Um, and the the idea of Zoe, try, Zoe trying her best to relate. And I'll never forget the feeling of receiving that for the first time. When, when she was trying her best to relate to me and she used, you know, the closest thing that she could muster, which was being a woman in the world and in the workplace. Mm. And this feeling that I had of looking at a friend of mine that I love and I care about and seeing that she's trying her very best to relate in the way that she can, but realizing that I still have to articulate to her that it's not the same. And, um, and to do that with a firmness, mm. but a, a care. Um, because the intent, the intent is, the intent in my opinion is to, um, is to make sure that the compassion and the empathy that Zoe has, which she's known for due to her ability, mm. um, encapsulates the entire human being that she's empathizing for. Um, that she's, and uh, I think that one of, there's this language that always comes to mind to me that compassion without taking in the entire human being is that compassion, um, is that empathy to take in a portion of a person. Um, uh, I think empathy and compassion is taking in the entirety of the human being in front of you. And um, Zoe was forced to do that with Simon and with Mo and with Tobin. And uh, yeah. I think that's part of what makes the episode so effective 
is that mm. it, you know a lot of times people try and do these types of episodes and they come off preachy and in this instance it didn't it came off as personal it came off as like i said trying to fit into another person's you know mind and what they're going through and not really being able to step into their shoes um we only have a few minutes left so i want to i, I want to ask you so much more about the episode but I, which i loved but um i just want to talk generally about the show we know it you're on hiatus a little bit now although you're working uh so what can we expect when you guys come back um, do you have a favorite musical number coming up that we can look forward to? What can you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> you want the spoilers. Um, so, yes, uh, always. <laughs> <laughs> what I can do is tell you this. There is, um, you're going to see, you're going to see us dip into Maximo um, very soon. Oh, okay. um, you're going to see us dip into Maximo in this very intentional and uh, robust way. They have, there's a number that, happens at Maximo that is one of the most um, joyous numbers that has ever been on the show. So I think mm. that that's one thing to really look forward to. Also, you're going to take a dive into, and I think what we have right now in this season is you're taking these deep dives into these different char char character yeah. relationships, and you're going to see a deep dive in the relationship um, and inside of a uh, fam familial relationship. You're going to see a deep dive that you might not expect coming, and that Ooh. is one that I'm I'm really looking forward to. Everyone going on that journey. I think it's going to be really uh, powerful. Yeah. Well, that's certainly something I look forward to. Um, is there a song that you know you love that you, if they could fit it into some kind of plot line, that you would absolutely want to perform? Yeah, yo. I mean, <laughs> I like I love music, but I okay. So there's there are so many different artists and so many different songs um, that I would love to sing. Uh, but I will say that there is a there's a few songs that hold a specific place in my life, and there's a case of you by Joni Mitchell, mm -hmm. um, which is I think just one of the best love songs that I've ever heard ever. Um, I think the poetry might make it difficult to find its way into the show. Yeah. But yeah. it's a, yeah, because it's like, you're like, okay, uh, Canada, what, where? <laughs> um, uh, and, but then I, so there's Joni Mitchell and Billie Eilish. I love. Oh my God. Yeah. She's like, such a revelation, you know, like for this younger generation, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those two come to mind. Lenny Kravitz is always a favorite, and Prince is always a favorite too. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything else you want to talk about in the last minute that we have? In the last minute that we have. Well, and every time, if I have some time, I just want to thank everybody that's involved. So Anya Adams, our director, Zorba and Gaga, writer, um, Luther Brown. Uh, choreographer extraordinaire, Mandy Moore, yes. Jeremy Myers, Jeff Morrison, um, Austin Winsberg, showrunner. It's not a given that we'd even be able to tell the story the way that we have. Um, it takes a lot of courage on behalf of uh, Austin and a lot of space and emphasis and listening to the black and brown voices in the room. And he did. And I'm really happy about that. Well, the episode was phenomenal. Um, and the episode leading up to it as well. And uh, I mean, the show is just so great. And I wish you all the success in the world. And I can't wait to see what's coming next. And I know we're waiting for hopefully a season three. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Let's go. But, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. It was lovely speaking with you today.